Hey, hi everyone. Uh, I'm going to uh, talk to you about uh, this new disability inclusion in uh, CCCM toolbox. Um, this is, um, I have only 15 minutes, I also uh, put my timer. Um, so it's going to be short, but it's, a, it's an important uh, opportunity for us uh, to introduce you uh, this uh, new initiative. Uh, it's an IOM one, but we're very happy to uh, to disseminate it and, and share it externally with partners who, who would be interested to, to, to use it. Um, it was recently uh, released, so uh, earlier this year, and uh, the aim was to provide uh, tailored guidance for CCCM practitioners uh, to work on more inclusive uh, CCCM uh, responses. So, words of uh, background uh, about this initiative. So, as you know, um, over the past few years, the international community uh, put forward a number of uh, commitments when it comes to inclusive humanitarian action. Uh, I did put a few on the screen. Probably your organization uh, was part of uh, one of these at least. So we can mention the Charter for Disability Inclusion in Humanitarian Action the Interagency Standing Committee Guidelines on the Inclusion of Persons with Disabilities in Humanitarian Action, uh, but also the Global Disability Reference Group and its uh, various uh, sub-working groups, uh, when it, in particular the, the sub-working group six on the participation of persons with disabilities, of course the UN Disability Inclusion uh, Strategy, and their guidelines on consultations with persons with disabilities. Uh, overall, there were uh, an agreement that uh, the international community uh, had not been doing enough uh, to integrate persons with disabilities in uh, humanitarian responses. Uh, so over the past few years, there were a, a huge international efforts uh, in uh, doing better. Uh, in CCCM in particular, uh, this commitment echoed uh, a number of um, ongoing initiatives uh, and uh, sector level uh, efforts too. Uh, we can mention the, the Women's Participation Project uh, when it comes to the, the participation of women and girls uh, in displacement sites, uh, including the participation of women and girls with disabilities uh, to, to foster their, their participation in site settings, the participation in displacement working group of the global CCCM cluster, uh, the, the launch of the minimum standards for camp management uh, also, um, so there, there was a, an overall commitment of CCM teams uh, in doing better in terms of inclusion. And this is very important uh, because we, we mentioned the international global commitment, uh, but most importantly, it's also a matter of personal uh, commitment. Uh, as we know, there are a lot of attitudinal uh, barriers that persons with disabilities face. Uh, so the, the, the commitment uh, of the teams of, uh, in the field uh, was also critical. But the question was how to, uh, how to do it. Um, this is not uh, taken for granted uh, that uh, CCCM practitioners would feel uh, confident enough to engage with persons with disabilities to support their participation. Uh, so so we, we decided to, to start working on guidance tailored uh, for practitioners uh, so that they would um, learn how to do it, learn more about disability inclusion. What is, the disa what is a disability? What are the rights of persons with disabilities? And how can we make it happen uh, from a CCCM perspective? Uh, we worked on this guidance and we received the, the, the support from BHA uh, a couple of years ago. Uh, to work also on a global project on quality and inclusive programming. And this project uh, helped us uh, finalize this guidance, field test it uh, in some locations with our uh, own teams, but also in partnerships with organizations of persons with disabilities. And that was very uh, important. And thanks to this support, we managed to, to, to finalize the toolbox and, and launch it earlier this year. So, uh, this is a, a, an overview uh, of this disability inclusion in CCCM toolbox. Uh, it provides step-by-step uh, -step guidance uh, and tools for CCCM practitioners to support the inclusion of persons with disabilities 
and increase their, their participation in humanitarian response. The entry point was uh, ready participation, but then we, we, we came to the conclusion quite quickly that we could not talk about participation uh, without talking about access and working on accessibility of our responses, of our services, of our sites. Um, we also uh, realized that we couldn't uh, do that without partnerships. So uh, while the entry point was participation, the, the, the toolbox focuses also a lot on partnership and accessibility. It contains uh, six key actions. Uh, we will go through them uh, later. And each of these key actions uh, is accompanied by a set of tools um, and links to internal and external resources. Uh, so we didn't want to, to reinvent the wheel. There are some resources that exist and that were really relevant for CCM practitioners. They were developed by partners. So we, we included them, but also created specific uh, tools uh, that we knew could help uh, practitioners uh, to, to, to develop more uh, and implement more inclusive actions. Uh, the, the toolbox also includes uh, training material, uh, essential readings, videos, case studies that were developed. Uh, the, the, the audience, the primary one was camp managers, um, but uh, we also included some resources for clusters and cluster coordinators, as there have been like interesting development uh, also on this front, and uh, I will hopefully have time to tell you a bit more about it. So this is uh, just, uh, and uh, one page uh, of this toolbox, um, an example on action uh, five on participation and the promotion of inclusion in the site life. So as you see at the top of the page, you have the key action, then it includes a few bullet points, step-by-step -step guidance on how to do it. And then at the bottom of each page, you have the, the tools and resources, internal and external ones. So the, the six uh, key actions uh, that have been listed uh, are the following. The first one is around developing capacities and increasing awareness on disability inclusion among the CCCM uh, practitioners. Again, it's a lot about learning about this topic, raising awareness, uh, changing the attitudinal uh, bias that we may have ourselves as humanitarian practitioners when it comes to inclusion. Uh, the second action is around building partnerships, first and foremost, with organizations of persons with disabilities. Um, we really insist on this, and uh, they are the experts. They are the ones who know uh, how, to, how to, to adapt our response to their needs and can be uh, our true partner uh, in these efforts. Uh, but in addition, it's also uh, an invitation to foster partnership with other sectors um, like protection, MHPSS, shelter, wash, uh, data, all sectors, uh, the, the inclusion of persons with disability uh, in an emergency response cannot be achieved by one sector only. We need to work all together. The response has to be uh, multi-sectoral. So this really uh, encourage uh, this to develop these partnerships. There's one action when it, uh, on uh, identifying the barriers that person with disabilities face, uh, and also enablers and on data collection. The four action is around access to infrastructure and services. The fifth action is around participation in the site life, and the sixth one on monitoring. There's also a strong focus in the guidance uh, on the intersecting factors of discrimination and the specific risk, for instance, that women and girls with disabilities can face uh, in displacement, but also underrepresented group, like for instance, persons with disabilities, with intellectual or, or, or psychosocial disabilities. Um, and so we think that by playing these uh, key actions, uh, CCCM practitioners can really uh, have a role to play uh, in inclusive response and in, in yeah making better uh, and they can they can really uh, trigger uh, with their engagement also the engagement of other sectors uh, on inclusive response 
So uh, here are some tools and, and resources uh, that are included in the toolbox. So uh, we mentioned the training material, uh, internal to AOM, but also external that is available online, uh, tips for communicating and interacting with persons with disabilities. Uh, these ones are very helpful. Uh, we realize that uh, CCCM actors um, were willing to do better, uh, but uh, really were lacking confidence in engaging with persons with disabilities, uh, didn't know how to do it, uh, how to do it in a respectful way. Uh, so these tips are, are, are really uh, welcomed by, by the teams who have piloted them. We have tools uh, on, on data from the, our DTM uh, teams, uh, some examples of reports, uh, partners tools like CBM Global, uh, hands-on and tool is also uh, a very good resource. We have resources on accessibility, uh, such as accessibility audits. Um, SOPs also for the setup of disability inclusion committees, insights, um, tips to organize inclusive focus group discussions, uh, also uh, resources for inclusive uh, cash-based interventions, indicators to, to monitor participation. Uh, of course, we have the, the minimum standards for camp management that are included, uh, as well as the annex on disability inclusion, that is another very good resource for practitioners. We have tried to, to make all the synergies as we could to, with the women's participation uh, toolkit uh, that some of you may know. Uh, we've included also videos, case studies, uh, and, and more resources. So these are just uh, pictures of the field testing of these tools that was uh, made possible thanks to the support of uh, BHA. Um, so uh, here, for instance, in Cox Bazaar, uh, when we were working with OPDs and persons with disabilities on accessibility audits and uh, trainings for field teams here in Ethiopia, uh, for uh, also uh, site improvement work and uh, awareness raising sessions with organizations of persons with disabilities, uh, examples of uh, examples of uh, resources also and surveys conducted in Mozambique, um, in Fiji, and our work with the Pacific Disability Forum there to, to field test some of these tools when it comes to uh, preparedness to, to disasters uh, in the country. So just to wrap up, because my timer is uh, telling me that this is the end, uh, just a few words on the way forward. So um, we, uh, this toolbox is already available for those of you who have access to the IOM uh, CCCM Community of Practice. It's already available there. And I'm um, pleased to let you know that it will be soon available also on the new uh, global CCCM cluster website uh, as a resource ac uh, accessible to all partners. Um, so we will uh, disseminate uh, this guidance uh, in this toolbox uh, this year and make some uh, training for practitioners. We will keep on uh, enhancing it with new tools, new resources. Um, we will capture also more and more lessons learned. It's a learning curve for many of us. So these lessons learned are very important. Uh, we need to document these practices to understand what worked, what did not. Um, and based on the um, further piloting of this toolbox this year, uh, we will uh, so announce it and hope to release a second edition uh, early in 2024 with the new resources and lessons learned. I'll stop here. Uh, I think I kept the time. Uh, thank you very much. And over to you, Jen. Daniel, you have perfect time, and I do see that our colleague Nana has um, her hand raised. And so, Nana, I'm going to ask you to ask your question in the chat. And then, yes, um, I know you're going to stay throughout the day, but if you could um, maybe reach out to Nana and see if she has a particular question, we don't have time to cover it right now because we you kept perfect time, so we will keep perfect time also. And with that, I will see if Danny. Who is our next presenter? Um, has his is able to put up his presentation so that we can start to introduce Danny. Thank you, and yes, very much. I'm I'm really looking forward to diving into the toolkit, and I really am glad that you were able to to answer that question. That even if it is an IOM tool, that you're making it available to to other agencies who may find it um, useful and interesting and we're very much looking forward to the launch of the new CCCM website. So 